Canada's new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and the Liberal Party of Canada. Since Canada has just elected a new government, a Liberal government, um, I thought I would talk a little bit about the new Prime Minister and his views on things, which presumably reflect the views of others in the Liberal Party and probably reflect the views of many Canadians, probably most Canadians. Um, Canada is a very left-leaning country, and I think that's primarily because uh, you'll never get basic education about things like the free market in school or in the media. You get a steady stream of left-wing propaganda your entire life. And those people who, who turn against that do so either because their family has conservative traditions or because they choke on the propaganda. The propaganda is so stupid, they just vomit it up and go looking for the truth. But if you're an average, ordinary person just going through your life in Canada, you probably just accept the propaganda as reality because it's too much effort to try and figure out an alternative view of the world. And it's easier to just go along with the one that everybody else has and the one that is constantly broadcast at you. It's the safe thing to do, you know, and people are conformist and stupid. So that's what they do. Now, Justin Trudeau, let me just talk about him a little bit. And I'm going to use the source material of the Liberal Party. Meet Justin Trudeau, teacher, father, advocate, leader. And on his page, you see him sitting in a living room with an Asian woman and a black man, and I guess their children. So he's very pro-diversity, obviously. And here's what he says. Over the past 10 years, it has become harder for millions of Canadians to get ahead. Well, that's true, but it's also over the last 40 years. It's not just over the past 10 years. Some people think the solution is to continue on the course we're on, giving benefits to the wealthy and making cuts to everything else. I have a different plan to invest immediately in jobs and growth and lower taxes for the middle class. My vision of our country is a place where everyone has a shot at success because we have the confidence and leadership to invest in Canadians. This vision is very much shaped by my experiences and the influences upon me. Trudeau and Sinclair, father and mother, French and English, East and West. I am always a son, but today I am also a husband, a father and a man passionate about his country. So I should point out, to those of you who don't know, Justin Trudeau is the son of Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who really started Canada's slide into leftist insanity back in the uh, late 60s and 70s. And of course, Justin Trudeau has grown up very wealthy. He's never had to struggle at all at anything. He's good-looking, he was born rich, and his road to success has been paved by his family, by his connections, by his face, uh, and um, by his wealth. But not by his mind, not by hard work and intelligence. And he has a BA, I think, in French and English literature, which means not only has he been insulated from reality his entire life, like this is a guy who never dug a ditch, who never pounded a nail, right? Who never had to. And then he goes and studies literature. He's completely living in a cocoon. He knows nothing about the real world. Anyway, back to Justin. And I'd like to share with you the sense of duty that propels me to serve our country by fostering common ground where every Canadian can find his or her own place within a strong and fair country. After graduating from McGill in 1994 with a BA, I found myself with a lot of time to think about my life and my future. That summer, in a quiet moment of reflection on a hillside, I realized my next step. I would become a school teacher. Uh, okay, so blah, blah, blah. He became a, he went to the University of British Columbia's education program and then taught in Vancouver, mostly in French and math. After years of teaching on the West Coast, I decided it was time to return home to Quebec. 
I loved Vancouver, had a great group of friends, loved the mountains and the ocean. But at 30, I was starting to feel that it was time to settle down and possibly start a family. I couldn't imagine that happening anywhere other than Montreal. Well, I can't blame him for going to Montreal. Montreal's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to cut through some of this crap. He met this beautiful woman uh, when he was helping to host some children's foundation thing, and uh, they got married. At least he has kids, you know. That's cool. Okay, so he's an advocate, uh, parking lot leader. Okay, I want to find out what his actual goals are. Growth that works for the middle class, a fair economic opportunity for everyone, respect for and promotion of freedom and diversity, a more democratic government that represents all of Canada. All right, he doesn't really go into his actual policies in this thing, so let me just see if I can find the platform. I'm going to go to Liberal, Liberal Party platform. Okay. Invest now in our future. Help the middle class. Open honest government. Access to information. Open data. Government advertising. Open parliament. Fair elections. Political financing. Leaders debates. Electoral reform. Some of these things I agree with. Young Canadians. They're going to encourage them to vote. (laughs) But what's the point of that? Government watchdogs. Supreme Court appointments. Financial oversight. Canada Post, Canada Revenue Agency, diversity in government, ending unfair tax breaks. So let's just look at this. We will cancel income splitting and other tax breaks and benefits for the wealthy. Now, I kind of agree with the idea of taxing people as individuals and not having income splitting. Keep it simple. Keep the tax system simple. I would like it to just be a flat tax, though. So the problem is that you have all of these progressive taxes that by the time you get up to making the kind of salary that can support a family, you're paying 50% of every dollar to the federal government or provincial government. You're paying half your income in taxes, right? And that's one of the reasons why Canada has a total fertility rate of 1.6. It's not easy to have kids in Canada unless you're very, very... um, blasé about their quality of life. All right. Um, Middle class tax cut. This is probably why they got a lot of votes. They promised a tax cut. (laughs) We will give middle class Canadians a tax break by making taxes more fair. When they say fair, they probably mean more progressive, more punitive on higher incomes. Let's just see what they say. We will cut the middle income tax bracket to 20.5% from 22%. So they're going to reduce the tax rate on middle income. That's income between 44,700 and 89,401. So that is a good thing. I mean, that will help people, but they're probably going to raise it somewhere else. Yeah, of course. So let's see, the tax relief is worth up to $670 per person per year. To pay for this tax cut, we will ask the wealth, no, you won't ask, you'll force the wealthiest 1% of Canadians to give a little more. Again, you're lying. It's not the wealthiest. It's the highest income. I hate it when people confuse wealth and income. You can be mega wealthy in Canada. You can have a billion dollars from China and move to Canada and live in a big mansion in Vancouver and pay no fucking taxes because you make no income. People pay taxes on income, not wealth. So stop saying you're taxing the wealthy when you're taxing people with incomes or with high incomes. What this does, taxing high incomes, does not hurt the wealthy. It prevents anybody else from climbing up the social ladder. It prevents anybody from getting up into that stratum because they have to give away their income to the government so they cannot accumulate wealth. But those who have already accumulated wealth or brought it from another country, do not have to give it up. And they remain as a permanent upper class. So let's not lie and pretend that taxing high-income people is taxing the rich. That is a lie. It fucking pisses me off. Anyway, it says, We will introduce a new tax bracket of 33% for individuals earning more than $200,000 each year. So they're going to tax people with incomes higher than $200,000. And a lot of Canadians are going to say, Who gives a fuck? Because... You know, those people are fairly rare. But, you know, this is all, I mean, the amount of tax you pay in Canada when you add it all up, 
like the provincial income tax is there. There's there's GST. There's tax on almost everything you buy. There's tax on houses. There's so much tax that if you're at two hundred thousand dollars a year, you're paying almost fifty percent of your income in tax every year, or maybe more. It might be more. I don't know, but it's high. It's very high. Okay, unemployment insurance. They should really abolish this. This is stupid. Employment insurance is a joke. We will fix employment insurance to better serve Canadians now and help boost Canada's economic growth now and in the long term. We will strengthen it, blah, 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 reduce the waiting period for benefits, reverse Stephen Harper's 2012 reforms that force unemployed workers to move away from their communities and take lower-paying jobs. Oh, great. Great, great, great. <laughs> yeah. No, they should abolish that program. This is sickening. Listen to this. Mark is a seasonally employed worker in New Brunswick's lobster fishery. Under our plan, when his seasonal work comes to an end and he applies for employment insurance, he will only lose one week's worth of income, not two. This is insane. You shouldn't fucking pay somebody a penny because they are unemployed when they work in a seasonal industry. Employment insurance is the biggest fucking scam in Canada. It sickens me. Fucking commies. <laughs> this kind of feels good, just bitching at these, this stupid shit. Uh, let's see what other bullshit they have here. Labor unions, Canada Infrastructure Bank. Boy, they got a lot of these policies, man. Labor-sponsored funds. Whatever that means. Healthier kids. <laughs> Healthier kids. Reuniting families. So that means bringing in more more uh, immigrants. International students and temporary residents. Remittances. This is probably sending money back to your... Uh... Yeah, see, we'll make it more affordable for Canadian workers to send money overseas. They mean for uh, immigrants to Canada to send their money back to their home countries. Why would you make that easier? Help for the world's poor. Oh, fuck. Canada's leadership in the world. What a joke. Preventing domestic violence and sexual assault. Let's see this one. We will give more support to survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and sexual harassment and ensure that more perpetrators are brought to justice. For far too many Canadians, overwhelmingly women, sexual violence, sexual harassment, and intimate partner violence are real and often daily threats. Many survivors choose not to report these incidents to police and conviction rates are low. I'd love to see some fucking evidence on this. Working together with experts and advocates, right, right, experts, meaning people who have like BAs in gender studies, we will develop and implement a comprehensive federal gender violence strategy and action plan aligned with existing provincial strategies. We will ensure that no one fleeing domestic violence is left without a place to turn, like men, for example. We will increase investments in growing and maintaining Canada's network of shelters and transition houses, blah, blah, blah whatever. It's just very biased, and they're going to hand over the keys to the social justice warriors on that one, for sure. They've got a lot of these things. Trans rights. Holy shit. Trans rights. Let me just see what this is. We will make sure that trans rights are recognized as human rights and fully protected. We will introduce government legislation to add gender identity as a prohibited ground of discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act. Blah, blah, blah. And, oh, this is scary. And to the list of distinguishing characteristics of identifiable groups protected by hate speech provisions in the criminal code. Yep. Let's just make everybody a victim except white men and then see how that works out. Oh, white, cis, het, patriarchs, I should say. Uh, guns. Oh, this is interesting. We will take action to get handguns and assault weapons off our streets. Because Canada is just crawling with assault weapons. Uh, yeah. CBC, well, of course they're going to re refund CBC to the max. Because the CBC has promoted the liberals. So, of course, they're going to fucking fund them. Ending MSM blood donation ban. This is a great example of political correctness gone insane. We will bring an end to the discriminatory ban that prevents men who have had sex with men from donating blood. Because their feelings are more important than the people who are going to get HIV from the blood transfusions. Feelings are more important than facts. The fact that 
homosexuality is a risk factor for AIDS is irrelevant. It doesn't exist, right? It can't exist because that would imply that homosexuals are somehow different from heterosexuals, you know, and it could be used as a basis to discriminate against them. So that fact doesn't exist. He says this policy ignores scientific evidence. This is absolute crap. Uh, I don't know. Just It's just political correctness. Clean jobs, environmental assessment, national parks, water. Uh, how is he going to fund all these things, man? It's interesting. I guess by borrowing money. Marijuana, they're going to make that legal, I guess. Let me just find out. We will legalize, regulate, and restrict access to marijuana. Oh, that's where they're going to get their money. <laughs> they're going to sell dope. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, well, fine. I don't really see any reason for it to be a criminal offense. Young people. Let's just look at this. What are they going to do for young people? We will involve young people in government. We will create a Prime Minister's Youth Advisory Council consisting of young Canadians aged 16 to 24 to provide nonpartisan advice to the Prime Minister on issues facing the country. Oh my god. Can you imagine the kind of people who will be in that council? The kind of sycophantic, slimy, left-wing student council pieces of shit that will worm their way into that council? Can you just imagine that? Ugh. Those people are, like, the worst of all forms of humanity. They are the vilest. The vilest of the vile. The student council... Uh, student advocate types are the vilest of all human beings. <laughs> Ugh. Can't stand them. Um, okay. Online services. Oh, whatever. Quality of service, your voice, science and scientists, the long form census, making decisions, helping families. What do they think they're going to do to help families? This is interesting. Oh, this is great. We will give families more money to help with the high cost of raising their kids. Yeah, why don't you just take the fucking burden off their backs? We will cancel tax breaks and benefits for the wealthy, including the universal child care benefit, and introduce a new Canada child benefit to give Canadian families more money. So basically, um, it's just this little kickback they give to people who have children, but... Um, they give it to the low-income families so that low-income families will have more money to invest in their children, right? Because that's what low-income families do. They invest money in their children. They don't spend the money on booze or drugs. They would never do that. I mean, it's just in defiance of all rationality, all evidence. If you invest in the poor, you will just get more poverty. Investing in the poor is throwing away money. It's, it's worse than that. It's breeding more poverty. You've got to tell people, look, you've got to raise yourselves up by your bootstraps. And if you're going to say to me that, oh, well, you didn't do that, I did that. I lived on the streets when I was a kid. My first job was cleaning cement off of lumber and stacking it. And I did that when I had no home. And I used the money to eat food at McDonald's every day. And I did it for six bucks an hour in the dust, in the hot sun, all day, scraping cement off lumber. And I paid my way through school, and I worked my whole fucking life hard to raise myself up. Okay. And yes, you can do that. People can do that, but they're not going to do that if there's a big handout for just, you know, for not doing it. And we need to discourage the poor from having kids, not encourage them to have more children. Because... This is all based on this liberal fantasy that all people are equal at birth, and um, the only difference between poor kids and rich kids is that the poor kids had less money. They had fewer advantages. They didn't have as much invested in them. It ignores the reality of genes. You can invest as much as you want in educating the poor and all that crap. It will have almost no effect on their outcomes, because most of that is determined by the genes. And this is something that liberals just can't fucking face. They can't face it because it destroys their whole worldview. Their whole worldview comes crashing down when it's faced with biological reality. The way nature works is you invest in what works. You don't invest in what fails. You invest in what succeeds and you build on that. But what, what the left does is that they want to invest in all the failures, take money away from the successes and invest it in the failures. So what are they doing? 
they're rewarding failure. And what do they get? More and more failure. So you keep getting a shittier and shittier population, a shittier and shittier economy, right? Because you're working against nature instead of working with nature. You know, you can take the edge off nature, but you can't go fundamentally against nature because you will just lose. And that's what these policies are doing. They're just aiming directly for failure. Um, there shouldn't be any child support payments to anybody. Let people support their children on their own. Uh, anyway, whatever. Canadians are so brainwashed. Um, affordable housing. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I bet you it's more tax breaks or some shit like that. We will make it easier for Canadians to find an affordable place to call home. Today, one in four Canadian households is paying more than it can afford for housing. And one in eight cannot find affordable housing that is safe, suitable, and well-maintained. Yeah, and those one in four are almost entirely the younger generation. The entire younger generation is fucked. The older generation is sitting in their big houses that they bought back in the 70s. And young people are crammed into basement suites and little condos that they can barely afford. When affordable housing is in short supply, Canadians feel less secure and our whole economy suffers. Yeah, but do you know why affordable housing is in short supply? Well, for one thing, there's an enormous regulatory burden. And for another thing, there's a huge level of immigration. We're bringing in enormous numbers of people, and they're all going into the few cities in Canada where there are jobs. So those places have become completely unaffordable. We will renew federal leadership in housing, starting with a new 10-year investment in social infrastructure. What the fuck does that mean, social infrastructure? Are they talking about roads? What are they talking about? We will prioritize investments in affordable housing and seniors' facilities. Right, because the seniors are the ones desperate for housing, not the young people. Fuck. Build more new housing units. You're going to build more new housing units? You, the federal government, is going to build housing units? the fuck does that mean? And refurbish old ones. So you're going to refurbish housing units. The federal government. <laughs> the federal government. That's great. Yeah, well, um, then each condo will cost $2 million because it'll cost $2 million to get federally employed, useless workers to build them. That's just brilliant. Uh, give support to municipalities to maintain rent geared to income subsidies. Yeah, so it's unfair when you have income splitting, which, you know, is a way of helping people to stay home with their children. But it's not unfair to have uh, rent geared to income subsidies. How about just closing the borders and um, letting the market generate the housing that people can afford? Why not just do that? We will encourage the construction of new rental housing by removing all GST on new capital investments in affordable rental housing. So again, more subsidies. This will provide $125 million per year in tax incentives to grow and renovate the supply of rental housing across Canada. Yeah, so every Canadian's dream can be to live in a little one-bedroom apartment in a crowded city, go to their shitty fucking jobs, have two incomes, have no kids, or maybe have one kid. Yeah, what a great future. Canadian young people should be fucking angry at what has been done to their future, at what has been done to their inheritance. They should be fucking pissed off. But I guess they'll all be too busy smoking dope and singing Kumbaya in their basement suites. We will modernize the existing home buyer's plan to allow Canadians impacted by sudden and significant life changes to buy a house without tax penalty. Now, so it's just more red tape bullshit. Okay, whatever. We will direct the Can oh this is great. We will direct the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation and the new Canada Infrastructure Bank to provide financing to support the construction of new affordable rental housing for middle and low income Canadians. So they're going to direct this Crown Corporation, this um sort of like the Canadian equivalent of Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or whatever, and the Canada Infrastructure Bank to give out loans to people who can't uh, afford to pay them or to facilitate the building of economically unsound housing. Because nothing could go wrong with that. I mean, that's not the sort of thing that ever causes major problems. 
We will conduct an inventory of all available federal lands and buildings that could be repurposed and make some of these lands available at low cost for affordable housing in communities where there is a pressing need. We will review escalating home prices in high-priced markets like Toronto and Vancouver and consider all policy tools that could keep home ownership within reach for more Canadians. I've got a policy tool for you. Let interest rates rise to their natural levels. That'll bring home prices down really fucking fast. And stop immigration. Boom. Problem solved. You'll never get that done, but uh, at least they're actually talking about housing affordability. All right. Opportunities for young Canadians. We will invest to create more jobs and better opportunities for young Canadians. After 10 years under Stephen Harper, good quality job opportunities for young Canadians are tougher and tougher to find. Now, they've been tougher and tougher for at least 40 years. Pretty much ever since your father started fucking up Canada. Um, Faced with high unemployment and underemployment, many young people have stopped looking for work altogether. Yeah, so why are we bringing in so many immigrants? Hmm. This is hard for both young people and their families. Many parents are seeing their household debt rise and retirement savings dwindle as they struggle to support their grown children, who often return home. Yeah, because they can't afford houses, right? Because of, like, 0% interest rates and the attempt to transfer wealth from the young to the old. Why should young people buy into a system which tells them, look, you're going to have to work your whole fucking life and basically all your income is going to be taken away from you and it's going to be sent to other people? Why would they want to participate in that game, a game in which they are screwed from the beginning? Why would they want to do that? Eh. Truth and reconciliation, that's something about let's uh let's blame white people for the native people's problems. Um Well, I like the national parks, clean water, that's good. Clean jobs, okay, but you don't have to do everything through tax incentives, you know. Uh climate change. Wonder what they're gonna do about that. Nothing, of course. We will provide national leadership and join with the provinces and territories to take action on climate change, put a price on carbon, and reduce carbon pollution. I agree with this. I, I, mean, I don't agree with all they're saying here. But what I agree with is that carbon should be taxed. And it should be taxed at the point of extraction from the ground. And not just carbon, but natural resources should be taxed at the point of extraction. Not at the point of use, but at the point of extraction because that's most efficient. And this could be done globally, and it's not that hard to do. And what this would do is provide incentives to reduce the use of um, fossil fuels, and also it would provide incentives to come up with alternatives. But you can't do it by yourself. Canada can't do it by itself. And um, most of the policies that people are proposing are these really complicated, weird things that wouldn't work because they don't depend on markets. Uh, I almost wish that the um, the Elders of Zion conspiracy theory was true, because if it were, we would at least have somewhat of a chance of preventing a global tragedy of the commons, because somebody would actually be in control of this fucking mess. But I don't believe it. <laughs> it's completely out of control. It's like a fire burning, you know. I mean, really, all of the fossil fuels being burned in cars is really just, you know, uh, in terms of physics, chemistry, and biology, it's just like a fire. It's just like these things caught on fire, and they're just burning. And <laughs> we are the agents of that process, of that chemical process, but uh, we're just driven by thermodynamics to do it. It's almost like, you know, our individual choices are just part of this larger thermodynamic process that's burning off the potential energy in fossil fuels as fast as possible. So, uh, yeah, that was a tangent, but I don't know. I mean, it, the world is so fucked up. Anyway, we now have another chapter in the Trudeau dynasty. We'll see how that goes. Peace out, and uh, keep your stick on the ice.